One of the great joys of retro computing is seeing an old machine roar back into life after many years of languishing in a cupboard or garage. Whilst it's nice to be greeted with our old friend Mr Basic prompt, it's even nicer to fire up some classic games for a bit of a play. Sourcing games, along with the hardware with which to load them, has never been easier. Sure, there are purists for whom nothing but the authentic period correct experience of a working floppy drive or cassette deck will do. I get it, and I have machines in my collection with period correct storage devices that allow me to scratch this itch. But there are some times where an age old problem requires a modern solution. So the plan here is to get these two things to work with a DIN connector, a seven pin DIN connector no less. I will need to have this one here, which I believe is ground. At least that was what my initial research suggested. And of course these two pins here being left and right, of course by pins I mean wires, because it's going into a quite an old microcomputer which obviously only gets signals in mono, we're going to patch these two things together. And by the way, the reason I'm holding a paperclip is because I'm going to use this in collaboration with these wires to make our bodgy not quite seven pin DIN connector, it's more like two. Firing up the soldering iron. So we'll need to solder, as they say in America. So this paper clip, which is a little bit thinner than the actual sockets on this DIN 7 connector, between that and soldering it onto here, it should work in theory. So I will be dipping the end of my uh, wires into the, into the uh, flux just to give us something a little bit more for the solder to stick to. Now bearing in mind my soldering is, as Australians say, house. That's a technical term for it. So uh, I'm going to be practicing a bit more before I get stuck onto any soldering, like proper, as in we're talking major. Oh, that's interesting. Check that out. Of course it's going to expand because that's what happens when you apply liquid to sponge. I was put the tiniest bit of flux on here just to kind of give it a little bit more. Okay, so the plan is to solder this wire to that pin. Or by pin, of course, I mean repurposed paperclip. And I've got to find my chisel tips. The flux appears to have worked a bit. Which always helps. Yeah, so that is sketchy, but it will probably do. So if I really wanted to turn this into a longer a longer term bodge because they sometimes say that temporary often means permanent I could just slip a wee bit of heat sink over the top of that and I reckon that would be good enough now this time around I'm going to come at it from a different angle so I'm going to come at it with a flux just on the on the tip maybe a little bit more flux than last time so we'll simultaneously tinning the wires whilst trying to attach it to this bit of paper clip with flux. So I don't know how successful that's going to be. It's probably a terrible idea. Uh, the comments feed's probably blowing up with, uh, well, oh, oh, like one of you is probably getting triggered and going, oh my God, this guy has no idea what he's doing. And yep, newsflash, I don't have any idea what I'm doing, but yeah. Basically, I'm just trying to prove that you don't have to be, I mean, everyone's got to start somewhere. And whilst it'd be awesome to be a Electronic Engineering and Soldering Ninja. Sometimes good enough is good enough. Like that slaggy piece there, which I could probably, uh, probably should just sort of address while I'm here so it doesn't get caught up in the, uh, in the DIN socket, because that would be awkward. But simultaneously make sure that I don't overcook it so that I end up Disconnecting the whole thing, I gotta start from scratch because that would be an absolute nightmare. Well, maybe nightmare is a bit of an exaggeration, but it'd be an inconvenience. And yeah, this is sort of like the origin story as to why I usually outsource my soldering. A few minutes later. 
Now you can't quite see it because it's in the shadow of a light unfortunately, but that bottom pin there is pin 2 and this one along the side here is pin 3. So you can see now why I had to patch the two audio channels together. We're going to fire this up and see if we can get this to work. Now it's probably as good a time as any to introduce the latest addition to my collection, the Acorn Electron. I have a more detailed video in the works, but for now, all you need to know is that this was Acorn's attempt to take on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and that it's affectionately known as the Elk. Back to the bodging. Okay, I'm going to be testing this out using one of my trusty old Dick Smith 7-inch TVs using the RF output. I also have a horrible feeling it's outputting in monochrome only. Not sure why that is, whether it's an, an undocumented feature or whether I've done something wrong. I don't know. That's out of scope for today's video. I just want to get a game loaded onto this elk and coming out through this telly. So the way we do this, as well as that lovely bodge wire, is through an app. There is an app for Android phones called Tap Dancer. And what that is, is that is a data set emulation, covers a lot of computers, ranging from the Commodore 64, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, right through to the various Acorn 8-bit machines, including the Elk. Of course, I've had to go and source a tape emulation file for the Elk to make sure it works. And the game I'll be playing is Chucky Egg, a very famous Elk game. So there is the main screen for Tap Dancer. That, you can't get that off the Google Play Store, so there'll be a link in the description to tell you where you can get Tap Dancer for your Android phone. So let's just plug this into the RF modulator do flicky here. I've already plugged the, the bodge wire into the side of the elk, so I don't need to plug it in again. Oh no, no kidding. So I've got to plug this here into the headphone socket. So that's another thing too, if you've got a phone that does not have a headphone socket, then you are out of luck. So next thing I've got to do is load the file, and I'll do that now. So we've got Chucky Egg that's loaded. Okay, so it's ready to go whenever I am. If you want to load a file off a tape into your elk, you use the chain command. Searching, and when it says searching, it's time to push the play button on the app. And you'll see that it's loading. So lo and behold, this appears to be actually working. The great thing with the BBC system and the way that their tape games worked is that they were quite efficient and the speeds were quite good. So it only takes a couple of minutes to load a game off a of tape on a BBC. Yes, we can play Chucky Egg. Ooh, looks like I got away with that. Although you'd be pleased to know that I've ordered enough parts to make the required cables for this electron with real DIN connectors and everything. This elk could also do with a bit of a tidy up, and I also suspect that the video output needs some work, all of which I'll share with you in a future video. Until next time, see you later.